welcome to part six of the USS Voyager build. Uh, we've got the uh, two halves of the uh, lower engineering section together now, and we've also put in the uh, deflector array housing too. What I have done on the inside, hopefully as you can see there, there is a very uh, big bead of epoxy resin uh, that goes right down the centre of the ship to cover that seam. Um, that's about half a mil thick so hopefully that shouldn't be going anywhere. That should actually be enough now to uh, keep the stru uh, structural integrity um, of the uh, lower half of the hull together when the pole goes in. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. I mean that's actually dried absolutely rock hard. We've also um, filled in the um, the hole where the old stand was going. Um, we've also got the seam filled in that runs all the way up the side there. Um, I still need to put another layer of uh, putty on there just to help finish that off. It's not too far away now, but it just uh, need another layer, and then. I need to get the uh, first layer of primer on that and then hopefully um, if there's any more work left that needs to be done to that seam I can do it after the first layer of primer has gone on. Uh, the other things that need to be done to this now really is I need to get the uh, detail put back on there with the photo etch parts. I've also got the uh, parts there with the photo etch that need to go on. Uh, I need to remove that detail there and that one and uh, that one too, uh, along with that one, uh, and then I can replace those with a photo etch part. There's also uh, a photo etch part that goes there and there as well, so that's okay. Um, also, need to remove this and replace it with the um, scratch build parts that I'm doing, so that'd be good. Uh, and then I've also got the, I'm not sure whether you're going to see this in the camera, yeah you can. Um, there's a seam that runs all the way around the outside of this, so that's uh, going to need to be filled out and sanded in as well. And then we've also got that seam at the back there, that's also going to need to be done. I'm um, quite worried about this one, well not really worried, but a little bit worried about this uh, particular seam because it's only a small bit of plastic on its own so I don't really want to be going sort of great guns on this bit here because um, it does look a little bit fragile at the moment and I think it will be until such time that we get the um, get the end cap in there really and also the uh, the shuttle bay uh, but apart from that it's uh, moving along quite well we also need to uh, once we've got the the um, the wood block in there for the pole. Um, I just then need to work out exactly where I'm putting the lights on the inside. Um, and we also need to work out around here once the deflector array has gone in. Uh, just need to work out where we're going to put the lights in for that. Um, it should be fairly central um, and I'm kind of thinking that one bulb should do it but I might need two because that is quite large. So uh, oh, the other thing as well, before I forget, is the um, photon torpedo launchers. At the moment, I'm not sure whether I will be drilling those out or not and having them lit up. But I've got a while, really, before I decide whether I'm doing that or not. As, uh, I'm not quite ready for uh, the saucer section to go on the top there, because I've got the lighting to sort out for that as well. So I've got a little bit of time to make... Uh, to make that decision for that. The other thing as well is just there um, I need to put a uh, anti-collision beacon in there as well and I also need uh, on the back end to get the um, detail parts back on again that I've removed from there as well. So there's quite a bit of work to get on with this actually to be quite honest. Um, it might sound quite simple, and I suppose some of it is, but it's just all the fiddly bits really, to be fair, so, uh, and as we all know, the fiddly bits always take the time, even though they are simple. So, I will come back to you as soon as I've made some more progress on this kit. 
Okay, so we've got the uh, bag details put back onto the ship again. And they are uh, looking a little bit too proud, if you look at them from that angle. So they will need a little bit of a sanding down just to make them uh, less noticeable than that. I mean, I, I think what doesn't help, actually, to be quite honest, is the fact that they are absolutely stark white. Um, but I reckon just a little bit of a sanding down and uh, just to thin them down a little bit, uh, they look all right. So they're not looking too bad. So I've just got this one here to go, and that one there. Um, <clears throat> still need to sand all those bits down. Uh, but I had to uh, clamp those into place um, just to sort of get them to conform to the curvature of this part here. And we have had a little oopsie daisy with glue. It's kind of... Um, leak through the edge there on that side and um, we've also got some there um, but hopefully um, once that's fully cured uh, overnight uh, hopefully that should just sort of sand out really uh, we'll soon find out um, but yeah I'm quite happy with that actually that doesn't look too bad uh, the detail that's there that does look a hell of a lot better than what was there previously so I'm happy with that. I will continue on and get the next bits done. And uh, as soon as I've got those on, I will come back to you. Now I've got the uh, other two pieces on there. Uh, so they're looking good. Uh, again, with these, I just need to give those uh, a quick sanding down. Um, and again, if you look at them from the side, they do look a little bit too out of place. But, you know, I'm kind of thinking that by the time that's actually primed, um, that's not really going to matter too much. I think that's um, going to settle back down. I think it's because uh, you've got the stark contrast there between the white and the uh, and the grey. But I will give those uh, a little sand down just to help thin them off a little bit. But it's not looking too bad. Um, I think the next job for me really is to drill the hole for the pole and get that sorted out. Um, I'm going to leave that pretty much well till last actually to be quite honest. Um, once I've got the hole done for the pole I'll get the those little bits sorted out I think um, but that's not looking too bad I'll save the photo etch um, and I'll do the windows and all of those bits all in one go I think I think that's going to be the way to do it rather than uh, swapping and changing different jobs around the place it's getting uh, uh, confusing enough actually doing the car at the same time as this I'm thinking to myself which one's got the warp engine and which one hasn't um, you know, so yeah, um, so that's about it for the moment. I will come back to you uh, as soon as I've got some more progress on this wee beastie. We got some more work done to the Voyager now, and if we start at the front end, uh, we've got the uh, landing leg bay hatches in place, we've then got the uh, photo etch on the new part of the detail there, we've then got the 8mm hole for the pole. Uh, and we've also got a one millimeter um, a hole for the anti-collision lights. We've also got the rear cargo hatch covers in place. We've then got the uh, landing leg bay hatch covers in place as well. And then we've also got all of the detail, all the photo edge detail on the uh, the new detail that we've put on there too. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So, the only thing that's left to do now on this is to remove this detail here. Um, and what I've done before I've done that, before I decided to uh, do that, I did a little test um, and just cut some rough squares out. As you can most probably tell by that one, it's not exactly too square. Um, but, you know, a square's a square. Unless it's a circle, of course. Um, and we've also got the other little mini square that uh, goes on top of that square and that would kind of sit up towards the, the front end of that uh, and I've also drawn on here uh, a little 6mm circle which would sit on top of that bit um, and then I just need to, once I've done that, draw another little circle that's about 3.5 mil and, uh, no sorry, 2.5 mil uh, and then drill out 2, millim two millimetres, 2 millimetres of that hole, uh, sorry of that circle 
to fit the ball bearing in. So you've got a little flange around the uh, the ball bearing, um, and then once that's all done, I'll be able to get rid of that detail then, and everything should uh, look okay with the new detail on there. Uh, I'm just still waiting for the ball bearings to come in. I'm kind of hoping. Well, the guy that I'm buying them from on eBay uh, did say that uh, uh, he was going to be on holiday until the 20th, so I would imagine it's going to be uh, some point after that. But you know, I'm not in a rush. I mean, I've got other jobs that can be done that I can get get done before I do that, so that's no biggie. I can just get all the prep work done and then just slip the ball bearing in once it's done. So the only things I've got left to do uh, on this side is the windows there uh, and the windows there. Just get the photo etching, get the uh, the windows in. Um, I'm also going to get the block of wood put in, get that put in with some resin as well. Um, and then that'll be pretty much all that finished off and to the same level that the uh, saucer section is. So there's still a uh, still a little bit of work to go before I move on to the next section. Uh, there's not too many parts left now that are going to need some attention to them. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there for the uh, for the moment, and I will come back to you as soon as I've got a bit more work done to this. So we've uh, managed to get rid of the detail now uh, from this section. So that's looking quite good. One thing I would suggest, if anybody is um, going to be doing the same build, make sure that you do have some uh, epoxy resin or something in there that's going to hold the two parts together. The reason I say that is because the uh, plastic around that area is very thin. And as you can see, um, we've got a lot of light leak coming through that. I mean, that will disappear anyway um, once... Um, I've got the replacement parts on there uh, and that is absolutely smooth there anyway um, but as I say that's because we've got the epoxy resin under there so I suppose if you like it's a way of cheating because you've got your filler at the surface already and you're just stand, sanding it down so that's absolutely great that's smooth um, we've got the large square uh, all sorted out as well now um, and that's what that's looking like And I've rounded the uh, the corners off on that one. And again with this, I've put the um, the file at a 45 degree angle and, and chamfered the edges off and then just rounded them off as well at the same time. And we've done exactly the same with the smaller square. Um, obviously just a little bit more fiddly to do. And then we've got the uh, the first circle done. Um, I just need to cut that, I just need to finish cutting that out really, that's just going to be a bit of a fiddly job. And that would sit directly on top of the smaller square. And then we've got the smaller circle that I've also done, um, and I've also drilled the hole out the middle, that's where the uh, two mil ball bearing is going to be sitting. So I just need to finish cutting that out as well. And this is going to sit on the uh, larger circle, so that's kind of more of a flange than anything else for the ball bearing to sit in. Um, once I've got the, the big circle um, cut out um, and I've got the smaller circle glued on to this I will then just drill the centre hole out on that again um, <clears throat> I do need about a mil uh, deep gap and luckily enough these are 0.5 so once I drill through that give me a millimetre and then that should hopefully allow the ball bearing just to uh, drop down and sit on the surface of the square where we can just splodge a bit of glue in there and uh, hold the ball bearing in and that should then hopefully um, give me a uh, semi-sphere uh, which is what we need uh, the ball bearing's been delayed slightly, well I said the ball bearing's been delayed slightly the guy's on holiday, I think I might have mentioned that before if I am repeating myself just tell me to shut up um, but I think it's going to be sort of next week before that comes in so um, I'll be able to get all of this bit done uh, and then just wait for the ball bearing to come in uh, there are another couple of little bits that I will need to do to it once the ball bearing is actually in place so I'll only be able to take this so far at the moment 
um, and then it'd just be a case of getting the windows done and also getting the um, the wood in for the pole the little wood block and then once that's done um, this will be taken as far as I can take it <coughs> so I will just need to wait for the um, for the little ball bearing to come in uh, in the meantime as well what I'm going to also have to do is I have noticed that there's uh, little bits of residue from the uh, canopy glue on a few of these parts so I'm just going to need to go in there really and just get rid of that um, that, that would be no biggie, it's just going to be a case of a toothpick and uh, just sit there and scratching it away Shan it shouldn't take too long but that's about it for the moment on this I will come back to you as soon as I've made some more progress we got the um, last parts on there now so that's starting to look pretty good so we've got the uh, the two circles in there, so I'll be able to get the um, get the uh, the ball bearing in there once that turns up. So I'm happy with the way that that's turning out, to be honest. Uh, by the time we've got that painted, uh, that should uh, look pretty much well perfect. So I just need to uh, carry on and get the last few jobs done to this uh, before we uh, move on to the next section. So as soon as I've got some work done to those bits, I will come back to you. Got the last uh, couple of bits done to the ship, so we've now got the uh, block of wood in for the pole. That's uh, been put in place with uh, resin, so that's in there quite solidly. Uh, we've also got there the, the um, windows in. Uh, where's the other one? There it is. And then if we turn it around, you'll see that it's exactly the same on that side. So we've got that window there. Uh, we've got that window there. I nearly forgot to put the little bits of um, plastic strip on those actually um, but uh, luckily enough as, as it would happen uh, remember just before I started filming this so I thought quick get those on. Uh, so that's pretty much well uh, as far as I can take it now I've just got the ball bearing to go in there and the last couple of little bits of detail to go on as soon as the ball bearing comes in um, so that's about it for the bottom section of the saucer um, need to work on the deflector dish um, but I won't do that until such time that I start work on the other clear parts for the uh, for the warp nacelles so I can put that to bed for the minute um, and I'm going to start working on the <coughs> Uh, the uh, warp nacelles and the uh, pylons and the impulse engines etc um, but I'm going to call it quits on this video because it is starting to get a little bit too long so I will catch up with you in part 7 where I'll be working on those other bits so thanks for watching and please do take care <laughs>